Have you heard of frogging before? It's spelled P-H-R-O-G-G-I-N-G, but it's pronounced frogging, as in the ribbit kind of frogs, like this, but it's not, doesn't have anything to do with frogs. I learned that's one name for it after watching I See You starring Helen Hunt. I See You involved frogging, but what was that? And was it a real thing? Yes, it, it is a real thing. And, and that's what some people call it, frogging. It's kind of like being haunted, except by a real living person. So how do you know if you're being haunted or frogged then? That's what we're going to explore today. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Courtney Maroc, your host and guide, and I'm so glad to have you joining me today to explore frogging. And are you being frogged or haunted? Because what if a lot of these cases of hauntings were actually cases of frogging? Not likely, but it has happened. Okay, so now let's get into what frogging is, which I think it caught my eye because when I did the Haunting American True Crimes podcast, it was in the Cases of Creepy Haunted Houses episodes where I talked about Theodore Edward Coney's, who was known as the Spider-Man of Moncrief Place in 1940s in Denver, my hometown. And I had never heard of this story, or maybe I had. As a kid, we would tell you know, stories to each other about somebody possibly living in your attic who, you know, might be eating your food and will come out and kill you in the middle of the night, which that's kind of what <laughs> um, Coney's did. He, he was a drifter and went to the house of his friend, Philip Peters, but I can't remember if he did talk with Peters or not. Anyways, he, Peters' wife, Peters's wife, because Peters is last is his last name. He was in the hospital, or not? He wasn't in the hospital. His wife was in the hospital, and I think that Coney saw him leaving, so he decided, "Well, I'll just go into his house and help myself to some food, maybe a little bit of money if I find any, and be on my way." But instead, he ended up finding some place that he could hide in the house. So he ended up living with Mister Peters for. Uh, I don't know how long it was, a month maybe or so, a few weeks, month, something. But then, and he was, he was coming down at night, stealing food. When on one of his food raids, he didn't realize Mr. Peters was home, startled him, ended up killing him. And then neighbors, um, could, they hadn't heard from Mr. Peters and they knew his wife was in the hospital. We should have seen him. So they kind of basically had the police come and do a welfare check, found his body, but it was really a big whodunit because whoever had killed him, it was a, it was a true locked room case. The house was locked up. There was no signs anybody had left. How had the person gotten in, gotten out? They didn't know. So months went by and then people kept reporting like, they would see something pass, you know, in front of a window or lights coming on or curtains moving. And the police thought, oh, it's just kids breaking in, playing pranks. Let's, you know, go check it out to put the neighbors at ease. But on one of their visits, I believe it was in July 1942 or 41, they went and as they pulled up, the door opened and then there was this face, a very gaunt, white, pale face staring back at them and then slammed the door. And they went running into the house and he it might have been, you know, again, like, holy crap, who's in this house? What was that? Did we see a ghost? They might have thought it, but they were just quick enough to see Coney's leg disappearing into the ceiling through a trap door. 
which they had noticed this little hole in the ceiling, the, the trap door, but it was so tiny. They were like, there's no way anybody could be up there. No person could fit up there. But Coney's was so teeny tiny. It was just a very slender man that he fit. He could squeeze through there. So they caught him and, you know, solved Mr. Peter's murder. And that was a, a real life case of frogging, which that's not what they called it then, but they call that, they call it now. So in I See You, one of the characters defines frogging basically almost exactly the same way that um, I found the definition on millionaire acres for it, which is this. Frogging is a person secretly living in another person's home. The word is pronounced frogging, and it gets its name because frogs, as the people who engage in this activity are called, tend to hop around from house to house as a frog might hop from lily pad to lily pad. So there you go. That's what frogging is. And as I just told you there, you know, the Peters case was a real life example, except that I guess Coney's didn't hop from house to house. He, he found a lily pad he liked and stayed, but, and I see you, they kind of, the, the girl was like filming herself, um, you know, for social media. And I thought, well, that's really dumb because you're documenting your crime because it is illegal to frog. Just to be clear, frogging is an illegal activity. Don't get any ideas. This isn't a new sport. Let's go frogging in people's houses because it's creepy as hell for one thing. And yeah, who do you want somebody just randomly coming into your house to live there unbeknownst to you? Okay, so now that we know what frogging is, we obviously know what hauntings are and frogging and ghosts or frogs and ghosts share some things in common. So let's let's talk about some of them. Whoops, I'm probably making noise. Sorry. Let's talk about some of them. And if you happen to, you know, hear any of these and think of some of your own that that I'm missing, then please, you know, that's what comments are for. Connect with me. Let's get a little dialogue going. Anyway, so some things that, you know, both frogs and ghosts share in common are strange noises because bo in both cases, people will report hearing things that they're like, what was that noise? What caused that? Uh, weird smells or unexplained smells. And ghosts sometimes, I wouldn't say they're stinky. Some ghosts have pleasant smells. Some ghosts have smells that aren't, I wouldn't say smelly, but maybe are disagreeable to some people's sense of smell. Uh, but frogs, I'm imagining, you know, people have to to pass gas sometimes, for instance. <laughs> if all of a sudden you're smelling things that you weren't expecting, or if they, God forbid, are very messy and keep all of their food upstairs at, if they're in your attic and say it gets hot, that could get stinky. Um, so that's ways that, that they might smell, or just maybe they haven't bathed in a while or have a personal fungi order. Who knows? Uh, disembodied voices, because even though a frog has a body, if you're not seeing that body, but you're hearing voices, you're probably going to think it's disembodied, right? And ghosts, as we know, they don't, they have not their bodies as we, we know bodies. So that's another thing. And you might, sometimes you catch things out of the corner of your eye, right? So what if the frog doesn't realize you're home and comes downstairs or just comes out of the attic, whatever? Um, maybe you don't have a two-story house and you, they're just upstairs or downstairs. Maybe they come upstairs. I don't know. They come out of their hiding spot and don't realize you're home and, you know, dart out of the way or something because they're like, oh, shoot. And then you turn and you could have swore you saw something, but now you don't see anything. You know how we catch sometimes things out of the corner of our eyes. So that's something because ghosts, that's also frequently people report. They sense something and then they look or they catch a slight movement. They turn nothing's there. And then things, this is kind of a big one. And this is kind of where we're going next with, this is sort of a way you can tell the difference between a frog or a ghost. Uh, things that disappear or are moved. So 
with with the ghosts, you know, sometimes they do take things and they might move them to a different spot or keep them gone forever in some cases. But or, you know, you definitely would know it's a ghost if you actually see the object moving without anybody holding it, unless you have a frog who's got a Harry Potter cloak of invisibility or am I saying that cloak name right? Um, anyways, if you know what I'm talking about, if, you, if they're able to hide themselves and you might have a frog with magical powers, but um, it would definitely be a ghost if, if it moved. But anyways, getting distracted. Uh, but if, if things disappear, like maybe a flashlight or, you know, something useful to you, a pillow that you think, well, that's weird. Why that pillow go missing or a blanket or something bigger, maybe something that somebody can use to make their hidden life more comfortable might be a frog, but let's get into that. What are some ways to know, you know, if it's a frog or a ghost, you could test which it's a little tricky. These tests are easier if you live by yourself, which really, I think to be a successful frogger, it probably, it probably ups the chances of getting caught the more people that are in the house, but it might also help hide the fact that you're hidden because there's other people to blame you know, smells or things going missing on that sort of thing. So because I think the biggest way probably to tell you have a frog is food. If food is going missing and you can't account for that, it's probably a frog. And they they don't, they try to be as uninv- uninvasive, is that a word? Un- they try to be as unobtrusive as possible so that they're not detective, obviously, because they want this place to live. Um, so they just take a little bit what they need to survive. And so if you're noticing just random little amounts of food missing, probably a good indication that you have a frog, but you could test for that too. You could leave out food, like put a bowl of fruit or um power bar, snack bar, something that you can count, but that people would think if they saw it, oh, they won't miss one or two because who's going to count, you know, if they don't deplete it enough and okay, you might just think, you know, oh, I forgot that I took one, something that really wouldn't raise a a flag. Um, You could do that. You could also tell people you're living with that you're going to test and do that but it's a little harder, which I'm saying that because if, if another good test would be to leave out money, because frogs, there's sometimes they do steal money. Um, So you could leave a little bit out on the counter and see if it goes missing. And if it does, but if you live, if you live alone, that's easy because you'll know you didn't take it. But if you live with other people, especially kids, teenagers, if you leave a little money out and don't tell them, hey, don't touch that, I'm leaving it for a reason, or, you know, probably you wouldn't want to tell your kids. I imagine if you have kids, you would check right away everywhere to make sure nobody's living inside because who would want that? It's kind of a little dangerous and super creepy. And we want to keep our loved ones safe. So you probably would tell right away and check. But then if you were like, what if the frog heard you coming? So then they hide even better and there's no way to trace it. I am imagine that's maybe possible because maybe they know the hidden spots of your house better than you do at this point. I don't know. Uh, anyways, probably I'm now freaking myself out because where could people be hiding that I wouldn't check? Um, okay, so so say you do leave the money out and you tell people, well, if, if I told my husband I sus- suspected somebody living here and we checked, didn't see anybody, but things kept happening, he might think I'm nuts and he might finally say, okay, you did it. You brought a ghost home with this way to go. Um, or he, he might believe, believe me that a frog is here, but he would want to mess with me or maybe mess with me just to make me think a frog was here. He's very ornery like that. So he might take the money, he might take the food. He might, you know, trip any traps that I set up, so to speak, just to mess with me. So you really have to know who, who you're living with if these 
frog test or frog finding test would be appropriate or not. But that, it's some suggestions. So if you have any suggestions about this, if you, if you have any ways you might try to trap a frog or uh, other, other activity, you know, that could be both explained as paranormal or as a frog, you know, put them in the comments. I, I'd love to talk more about this because this frog thing really has me freaked out a little bit. Freaky frogs. You, so many things you could could also use F-bomb on the frogs too, which I think a lot of people would say if they found a effing frog up in their attic or in their basement or cellar or something. So anyways, thank you so much for joining me and tuning in. And remember, like, share, subscribe, and comment. I really want to know your thoughts on all this frogging stuff because it's really, it's freaking me out. If, you, if you've seen I See You, let me know what you thought of it. It's, it's got good reviews, but I'm not so sure... I'm sold on where it went. So I would love to know other people's. I don't want to wreck it for anybody. I don't want to give any spoilers. I just am curious. So if you've seen that too, uh, you know, that's another thing you could, let's talk. Uh, again, thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, ciao for now.